Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We start with the latest from the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympic Games. After 10 days of action, Norway continues to lead the medal standings. The Norwegians have won 9 gold, 5 silver and 7 bronze for a total of 21 medals, the most at the game so far. Germany are second in the table with 8 gold, 5 silver and 2 bronze. USA occupying the third spot with 7 gold, 6 silver and 3 bronze. Well, there was Caribbean representation in the bobsleigh at the Games today. And in the women's monobob, Jamaica's Jasmine Fenn, later Victorian, finished 9.29 seconds behind the winner, USA's Kaylee Humphreys. Humphreys with the win became the first woman to win gold for two different countries, having previously represented Canada. So Lance, you know... Earlier this morning, we saw history being made. Kaylee Humphreys, I'll start with her as she's the gold medal winner in the monobob. She represented Canada previously. She did so for some time and she had some issues with her coach. She cited sexual assault and all these different things. So after she couldn't take it anymore, she decided that, you know what, I'm going to... Uh, represent the USA and it has to be a dream come true because she's representing a new country she actually only got her um, her okay to represent the USA as of December and you know she's here now winning gold medal what an achievement yeah very very outstanding the thing is that for a lot of jurisdictions as far as sports administration is concerned there are varying guidelines governing switching allegiance from country to country and in many of the major sports, you know, a lot of time has to elapse before you can actually yes. switch from one country to the other. Um, clearly, from the Winter Olympic standpoint and, and, and the Winter Olympics competition, um, she probably is fortunate that the rules aren't as strict as some other you yeah. know, administrations of sport. But great for her that she can maintain her prominence as a Gold. world-class performer. <laughs> for Canada, for the USA, as she, as she was for the Canadians. Yeah, and I know we're going to touch on Jasmine, but let's hear now what she had to say speaking after her participation at the 2022 Winter Olympics. For three Olympics, my mom hasn't been able to travel. And this one's extra special with the loss of my sister to be able to share the experience with her. So it was really nice to see her, my best friend, and, and everyone on. So how was the experience for you overall? Um, I'd be lying if I said it was amazing. <laughs> it's been one of the hardest years of my life. Probably the hardest eight weeks of my life. And I'm grateful that I had the strength to be here. And my sister is no longer here. So I'm just pushing through to live for her in this experience the way she would want me to. Of course, Jasmine's sister passed away um, just recently and of course it has taken a toll on her and her entire family land. She, when Jasmine was taking, well, Jasmine taking part of the 2022 Winter Olympics is the first time that she's actually um, used the sled on this track because she had to miss the training before based on the circumstances and you could see the amount of emotions on her face because, you know, she's thinking about um, the loss, I, I can't even imagine what it would feel like to lose somebody very, very close to me. So um, things didn't go as she wanted in the heats, you know, because it's her first time. Sometimes she would touch the sides of the, um, the railings and whatnot. Her start was a bit uh, not so clean start that she would have wanted. Of course, you'd, if you look at the footage, you'd see her like at a certain point, she would touch the edges, which is obviously what you try to avoid in this event. So very, very tough circumstances for Jasmine, but I have to say she has really toughed it out and I'm extremely proud of her. Yeah, the fact is too that she would not have competed too much in the monobob. Her no. experience in Olympic, winter Olympic sports would have been more the, 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 the two-man sled. Yeah, bob and, sled. Yeah, in, in the, and you know, the, the monobob for her would be, I don't want to say completely unfamiliar, but her experience at the, in bobsledding would be a lot more pronounced with a partner or even a form, four-man sled. So for her to go the Mona Bob here and the stuttering preparation that she had with the loss of her sister, hugely emotional. And you could see, you know, how difficult it was for her 
in that interview to recount, you know, what not only what happened today in her effort because she didn't do very well, but you know, just looking back at her preparation, which certainly wasn't as good as it as it needed to be to make a more prominent showing at these games. Yeah, and Jasmine's sister, of course, her younger sister, Angelica, she was 27 years old, so a very, very young person to pass away. Mm -hmm. And based on, you know, we, I'm not sure the causes of the death, because whenever she spoke in the press conference, she never really explained how the sister died, but you can tell that they really had a close relation. So I'm still proud of her. I know the entire Caribbean is proud of Jasmine. And we'll continue to root for her. Remember, the Monobob also is making its debut lands at the Winter Olympics. So it's a new, a new event, you know, and she'll get better with time. Mm, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, still with bobsleigh and the Caribbean participation in the two-man bob of Jahitu, Trinidad and Tobago, who are being piloted by Axel Brown, are 3.32 seconds behind in 27th position, while Jamaica being piloted by Shan Wayne Stevens are 4.20 seconds behind in 30th position. So again, we have spoken about how proud we are, Lance, about our Caribbean participants. Um, the Trinis were really good in the heats, you know, better than many would have expected. And then we had the Jamaicans as well. We've been rooting for them. Um, they also improving in their runs. Yeah, um, great that they were able, the Trinidad and Tobago team, to maximize the experience of an Axel Brown who had represented Britain before, um, representing Trinidad and Tobago. And his experience and know-how in the event certainly boosted them significantly. A 27th spot in the prelims, yes. you know, not, not, not ideal. Axel Brown told us on the Sports Max Zone a couple of weeks ago that they would like to make a top 20 finish, given the fact that they are in unfamiliar territory based on the quality of opposition that they will face. Um, when I put the question to him, you know, it was pretty much in the context that it, at this stage of their development, <laughs> you, you don't expect them to win medals. So what would represent success for them? So if they're 27th at the moment, um, they would be off what their target is because he did say clearly that they would like to make the top 20 and uh, they've got to improve on that. The Jamaicans behind them, um, I think the Jamaicans would not have had anyone in their team as experienced as Axel Brown is in yeah. the bobsled event. So the Jamaicans are going through the development phase themselves as well. Yeah, and in my conversations with these uh, competitors, especially the Caribbean ones, you know, what they said to me is that Lance, they are happy to be able to represent the Caribbean, to let other people looking looking on know that, you know, we too can compete. It, yes, it's different because we don't have snow and we don't have winter here in the Caribbean, but it's just a step in the right direction as to if you want to do it, you too can do it. And I think, you know, that's one of the mission that they've embarked on, although we all want to win, but I know they also just want to get more Caribbean representation. Yeah, the thing is, too, that when the teams combine for a Caribbean effort, in the, in the case of a Jasmine Finletter and in the case of an Axel Brown, these are athletes who were born and competed in their adopted country or the countries that they grew up in, yes. that they're, they're citizens of. Yes. So unlike some of the other competitors who were Caribbean people trying to make a transition into a winter Olympic competition, um, we have had... In many instances, when the Caribbean is representing, um, represented at this level, they would have the benefit of someone or, or at least a couple of people in their setup who would, who would have been naturalized Europeans or Americans who would understand and be comfortable with the winter experience. So it wouldn't be anything new for them. I say that with Axel Brown and Jasmine Finletter, who was born in the USA yeah. and, you know, snow is nothing new to her. So it's a combination of blending that sort of experience with the Caribbean people who grew up in the Caribbean, were not exposed to snow in the way that, that many of their rivals would have been. And um, good to see that the transition is being made, though, because yes. the, the bobsled event has a lot to do with athleticism and power, leg strength, glute strength, and so on, which is what sprinters in track and field would have a lot of yeah. which is why you know people like lola jones had made the transition 
from sprint hurdling for the USA to the Winter Olympics, and in the case of Jamaica, Kara Russell, and so on. So it is, and um, Laureen Williams, the American sprinter, who was one of the best sprinters in the world when she was active, was able to make the transition to do the bobsled because it has a lot to do with the power in the legs and the glutes and the thighs and the hamstring. Yeah, and just to touch on our other athletes before we go, remember we have uh, Benjamin Alexander taking part in the alpine skiing for Jamaica, so he also um, had a good run there. Then we also had um, Haiti, Lance, Richardson, Viano. Um, Haiti making their debut at the Winter Olympics. Very, very proud. I know when they had the heats, he didn't get to complete because yes. of the, um, there's a lot of snow and, you know, issues with the weather. So he didn't get to complete the course. But um, Jamaica's Benjamin Alexander was able to complete. And, you know, he said, just complete and it's success for him. We spoke to him on the show here and he, he just wants to continue living his dream. He's, he says that, you know, if he wins a medal, that's all right, but you know, he wants to just represent, he just wants to live his dream, and he's happy to be representing Jamaica. Are we scheduled to talk to him tomorrow? Is yeah, we I spoke to, to him today, him? Um, he had a flight, um, he promised to be on tomorrow, so we're working on that. Because yes. I'd love to hear from him firsthand how the experience was. DJ to an alpine yeah. skier. I saw, I saw him talking about it on some European television channel over the weekend, and he was so thrilled. He yeah. was so thrilled to be rubbing shoulders with some of the best skiers in the world and to think that you know three four years ago he wouldn't have, he would have dreamt of being at the winter olympics competing so he was really elated and happy even though his initial statistics didn't measure up competitively he was really happy to be um at the winter olympics and as i said sharing a stage with uh, athletes that you know prior to to now he would he would just be dreaming of, of, of being well, in the, same, do come in the same space with. Dreams mm. do come true. And as we head to our commercial break, we remind you that you can catch all the Winter Olympics action right here on Sportsmax. We'll be right back.